Affinity Designers. One of the hardest things about doing comics is just getting started. So today we're going to create a template that allows us to quickly get going in the artistic part and we'll let the tools of Affinity Designer kind of pave the way and smooth our path so we can uh, stop messing with the software and get into creation. Let's dive in. Now I've already created a template page that's the dimensions of a standard American comic, but you could do a manga page or your own unique page if you'd like. Um, so once you've got that set up, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, create a series of layers. The first layer, the bottom layer, is going to be our script layer. And we're going to end up um, titling all the, all the different layers and doing some other things to help us uh, move through the process so that our layers palette will actually be our timeline for creating our comic page. You might have a different script set up, font, that kind of thing. Um, it's up to you. This is just kind of to show you how the idea works. The next thing we're going to do is create a, another layer inside of the first layer just by drawing a page. And we're going to draw the same page dimension as the entire page itself and then shrink it down and make some copies of it. This is going to be for thumbnailing. So this first layer is going to be for scripting and then for doing some thumbnail sketches. So once I've got a, a nice border with a, a st stroke that's, you know, thick enough to differentiate uh, different uh, images, I'm going to drag a size I like, drag it below the script, and then make some copies. Once we've got these six thumbnail boxes, we're going to select them all and then using the geometry tools we're going to, going to add them all together to make one uh, path and we're just going to name that thumbnails. The reason why we make them uh, one object is so that we can mask our sketches inside of them and uh, we don't have to worry about the borders. You don't have to do that but I think it just keeps the page clean. Next we're going to create a pixel layer. Up till now the layers have been vector and text layers but this pixel layer is going to allow us to create a layout pencil layer and then I'm going to add a, a layer effect, a color overlay, and I'm just going to set it to a blue, like a blue pencil. You can do any color you want. I just want to create a, a pencil that will um, I can use for temporary uh, looks, and uh, this way everything you draw on that layer, no matter what color is selected uh, by your pen or brush, is automatically going to be converted to that blue line. You'll notice that that layer is uh, down and to the right of the thumbnails layer. That way it's um, the thumbnail is clipping the, uh, the pixel layer and just as an example if I pull up a brush uh, in um, the pixel persona and I just start painting uh, in even though my bl black is selected you see that the, the brush is actually blue because it's uh, being changed by the uh, layer effect and it's also masked inside so I can draw across all six panels and no drawing will get outside those panels. Okay, so that's our layout group. Now we're going to create a uh, pencil group. And that's going to be comprised of two pixel layers. One that has a red line um, color overlay and one that has kind of like a dark gray. And what that will do is allow us to take our preferred layout, enlarge it to the full page, and then begin to pencil over it with the red line and the, the uh, black line to create some final pencils. Of course you could skip this step and go right to inks if you really like to be loose or, or if your um, method of creation uh, just wants to be more organic with the inks. But um, if you want to create some tighter pencils, maybe you're doing it with a buddy or um, you, wanna, you, want, you just want to go through the process, this is what I suggest. So we're doing the same thing, we're creating another um, layer, a pixel layer, I'm calling it red line, and I'm setting the uh, color overlay to a reddish color. And for the final pencil layer, I'm setting the effect to kind of a bluish uh, charcoal gray. And with the final pencil completed, we'll put those in a group and title it pencils and then move on to our inks. So the first thing we're going to do is create a pixel layer, and that'll be used for uh, any pixel inks we want to do. But it's also good to have a vector layer, and we're going to call that vector inks. That's great for flooding, or if you want to try to use the, the pencil tool um, in the designer persona instead of using the, the uh, pixel tools, that's a great option too. So we just want to organize the two different types of inks that we'll be using, whether it's pixels or vector. And of course, you could create more layers. This is just kind of 
uh, the basic approach. One tip again is to add a color effect to both layers and that way you don't have to fuss around with the, um, the colors because you want inks to be black. So just by adding that co uh, color effect you can guarantee that no matter what the color is in the color picker it's going to be black on the screen. Next up is the lettering group and you could include this in the inks if you wanted to. Uh, traditionally comics are, have the uh, lettering and sound effects inked first just to make sure there's room for the text but I'm going to create this as a separate layer just because it's an option and you can do these in a different order, you can restack them the beauty of these groups is that they're easy to move around but by putting them on top of the inks I can, I'm going to guarantee that the text sits on top of all the artwork so the lettering group will include both a text layer and an effects layer for sound effects Previously in this series I showed you how to make um, a, uh, a collection of grids as an asset that can be re-tooled um, and reused, totally editable, because it's made of one image that's being masked by a bunch of skinny lines. So I'm going to make a layer and pull out this asset and put it below my inks and then I can drag those um, individual pieces around to change, change the size of the panels while maintaining my grid. And uh, I'm going to leave, leave this grid intact, but I just want to show you that this is how it works. I want to reiterate that I'm setting up these layer groups according to how I work and what makes sense to me based on traditional methods and the benefits of uh, digital design. But, you know, if you are a manga artist, for example, and you want to use textures, include a texture uh, layer in your inks um, folder or rearrange them to suit your workflow. This is just an example to get you started. This final step is not necessary but if you right click on a layer group and scroll to the bottom of the, the menu that comes up you can select a color for all the items in that group and it just helps navigate uh, your layers easier. To wrap up this video I'm going to show you two ways to take what we just did and make it permanently accessible to you and uh, in, in a flexible way. So the first way is to create a group out of all those layer groups, call it comic page for example, and then go to your assets panel, um, right click and um, add that whole group to your assets. Then you can just drag it out and realign it to your page and you have all those group layers back. If you don't want to mess with the assets folder, then the way to go is to create a template so that when you open up a new page, you're all ready to go to start creating. So the way to do that is to go to the file menu, select export as template, select a folder that you want to save the item to, and I'm going to call this 8 panel grid, save it there, and now uh, if I, I'm going to go to file and new, I select the l templates button on the left column, add folder, navigate to the folder I just saved that template to, and then select choose. The template will automatically appear. Click on the template icon and then hit the button for create. And there you have all your layers back for your use, ready to create. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you learned something and consider subscribing to the channel. We'll catch you next time.